Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the Transportation Conference Committee for this Wednesday, May 10th. Um, we will be uh, considering uh, 11 provisions. And um, what we'll do is uh, similar to the way that uh, Chair Dibble has handled uh, this, um, these uh, items for consideration, which is uh, we will um, uh, go over it. We'll have the uh, staff go over, uh, go over them. And then um, uh, one by one, we'll ask uh, for public testimony if that uh, is needed or warranted, if anyone would like to testify in any of the provisions. And then we'll have committee discussion, and we will uh, entertain amendments and uh, adopt or not adopt the provisions that are before us. Uh, so with that, members, um, our first item uh, relates to uh, veterans uh, with disabilities, uh, tax and fee exemptions. Uh, Mr. Burris. Mr. Chair and members, uh, the first item on the list, item number two, in the numbering establishes some exemptions from motor vehicle sales tax, motor vehicle registration tax, and various uh, filing fees associated with motor vehicles as well as uh, fees associated with uh, driver's licenses and identification cards. Uh, this is found in part C of the side-by-side -side documents. Uh, it's a number of sections, one to two, six, 12 to 13, and 21. These are all house-only provisions. And sorry, um, uh, Mr. Burris, um, if, I think what we'll do is, um, Chair Double, remind me that um, we had uh, staff go over uh, all of the provisions initially, and then we would uh, then go back to the beginning and start adopting them. So if you could then also start with uh, number three then. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, item number three on the list is a policy difference. This establishes a Highways for Habitat program uh, both House and Senate have the uh, program being established. There are some, some differences in aspects of the program. Um, and I can go into further detail when we get, get to that for uh, uh, committee consideration. Item number four on the list is a house-only provision and would modify an existing forest product special permit. Uh, that's an uh, overweight vehicle special permit. Makes a variety of technical changes to align the permit structure with uh, other permits in current law. The substantive change is to establish an additional permit type that would provide for over width uh, forest product um, hauling. And there is an am amendment that's also been di distributed that makes an adjustment to that to uh, establish just one permit type and allow for, for over width uh, vehicles in some circumstances. Item number five on the list is also related to special um, permits in overdimension, overweight loads. Uh, this is a modification to the types of products that can be hauled under a for farm product special permit to explicitly add grass seed. This is a house only provision. Item number six on the list is also house only and this would create a hours of service exemption in some circumstances uh, involving um, declarations of an emergency and um, uh, transportation of uh, heating fuel. The next item, item number seven, is a Senate only provision and would establish a minimum uh, railroad crew complement um, for some railroads. And there is a amendment that was distributed that provides for a restructuring of and some clarification around the requirements being established um, so that it, it largely has a technical restructuring to it. That's the A68 amendment. Item number eight on the list is a house only provision. This establishes county reporting requirements for counties in the metropolitan area that is, have established a local option uh, sales tax. It's the transportation sales tax. There's an A124 amendment that has uh, been distributed and that revises uh, some aspects of the uh, reporting requirement and the, the timing on the, when the report is due. Uh, moving then to item number nine on the list, this is also a house only provision and would establish 
uh, references to federal law for setting the maximum civil penalty for some types of pipeline safety regulation violations and, and violations on uh, failures to report regarding uh, pipeline release. Item number 10 on the list is also a house only provision. This would be an authorization for the Metropolitan Council to issue uh, bonds uh, um, that are uh, spread over two years. And then item number 11 on the list is uh, found in both House and Senate language. This is a piece of the transit safety and enforcement provisions. This is the last piece that the conference committee hadn't uh, taken up. And there's um, some uh, working discussions uh, that would involve a, a mixture of House and Senate provisions on that. And there's an A126 amendment that would add uh, another uh, community engagement uh, component to that. Um, that section deals with rider experience and a couple of aspects of um, light rail uh, code of con or, or, or rider code of conduct and uh, transit facility monitoring. Uh, that, Mr. Chair, is the list. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Burris. Um, and uh, I've, I'm sorry, earlier I failed to just let uh, members uh, who are here in person and in the um, broader public who may be watching that we're working off of Transportation Finance Conference Committee provisions for consideration 5-10-2023 time stamped yesterday at 5.59 p.m. And um, uh, we, uh, uh, at this time, will open up a public hearing. So if there's anyone from the public that wishes to testify on um, any of the items before us, uh, this would be an opportunity to do so. Anyone here for any of the items? Okay. Our public hearing is closed, although uh, anyone can still come up if the spirit moves you. Uh, if there's uh, any discussion that you would like to take issue with, I think there are a couple of things we may be calling people forward for additional uh, perspective. So uh, with that, um, members, we're going to now uh, go through these items one by one uh, and uh, discuss them and um, vote. Uh, so the first item then is number two, and this is side by side part C, uh, pages R2, R6, R9, R17, uh, and that is a provision veterans with disabilities tax and fee exemptions. Um, Represent Petersburg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to move uh, that uh, that change uh, number two. Uh, that in is in regards to just eliminating the fees for vehicle fees and taxes uh, for veterans. Thank you, Representative Petersburg. Uh, and this was, uh, uh, came to us um, by uh, Representative Hudella, and um, uh, it is a House uh, provision. Uh, is there a discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, Representative, or uh, Chair Dibble. Getting ready to vote. Okay. <laughs> Getting used to these Senate mics here. Uh, okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the motion prevails. Uh, the um, Veterans with Disabilities Tax and Fee Exemptions is adopted. Uh, yes. Um, Senator Jasinski, uh, I have um, done some due diligence on your amendment, and uh, I am in agreement with you. And so um, I, uh, uh, this relates to the Highways for Habitat program. And um, I would like you perhaps just, I know you explained this uh, yesterday, but if you want to uh, uh, move it and explain it again, uh, we'll put it before us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, members. So we, did, we have discussed this. It was about the feasibility. Uh, the compromised language was to the extent practicable, practicable uh, which gives MnDOT some flexibility on what projects uh, they look at and, and how they're uh, implemented. So I think it, it gives a good thing for MnDOT to be able to have that flexibility to make sure that they are practicable. Practicable, sorry, struggling with that word. Feasible, feasible would have been much better, but yeah. we'll, we'll go with practicable. Um, thank so I'd, you. I'd offer the 869. 
Thank you, um, Senator Jasinski, and I, I, I will support the A69. Um, I would like to see, I, I know we have some folks from MnDOT here. Um, if you would have any comments on this uh, on the record, I think that would be appreciated um, in terms of how you would be able to implement this under this language. Yes. Welcome, Commissioner. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. My name is Nancy Dobbenberger. And I'm the Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Thank you for letting me speak on this provision today. Um, yes, I want to restate what I mentioned uh, in one of the previous conference committees about the amendment language, and that would provide us some flexibility as we are implementing the program and uh, implementing those standards and best practices that we have as we manage our roadsides. So appreciate this language adjustment. And I uh, thought I'd also use this opportunity to uh, speak to the questions that came up at the last conference committee about the costs yes. and, uh, and what it would take to implement the program. So there was a fiscal note on this, and it, it mentioned a number of costs and, and totaled those up to, but just to um, parse those out a bit, we are looking at pollinator habitat you know, here for the most part, and as we're looking at the different things that could be used by pollinators to, um, to provide those, the habitat that they need, it would be about 30,000 dollars per mile to provide some light plantings along a corridor. Uh, however, if we were to have more full uh, plantings, trees, shrubs, that brings us to the higher end of the cost estimate, which is 275,000 per mile. And then those would be in addition to any living snow fence that we would put out there that would prevent drifting. And the cost for that would be about 145,000 per mile. So that would be in addition to any of those plantings. Um, and I stand for questions. Uh, Chair Dibble. Um Thank you. Um, thank you, Commissioner, um, uh, for taking a, another look at this and, and uh, helping us understand a little better some of the distinctions. Um, and uh, like you said, uh, I think the interest is in developing the kinds of habitat that would support pollinators, um, you know, maybe uh, ground nesting birds, things like that, um, that wouldn't be quite as uh, elaborate or as, ex as expensive so we could get as much mileage from the dollars that we've appropriated. Um, so I appreciate that. I was having a little bit of heartburn, as you know, about uh, how little we got for how much we put in. Um, so, so I appreciate uh, the look at this, the second look and the consideration of different applications for different purposes in different areas so we get more mileage. So much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Dibble. Uh, is there any discussion? I do have a question for the commissioner, but one would defer to other members first. Uh, um, commissioner, I know that I mentioned this to you uh, in passing, and um, I, uh, after um, Chair Dibble uh, the other day raised uh, questions of, about his concerns on cost, and then we're in uh, we see your memo uh, or email from yesterday. Um, I uh, talked or had uh, some correspondence with um, the senior ecologist and vegetation specialist at the Minnesota Board of Water and Soil Resources. Uh, and um, that individual uh, sent uh, cost figures that were significantly less than what you've quoted. Uh, so, um, uh, they're saying seed mixes for these pollinator projects um, can range from 250 per acre uh, for lower diversity mixes that are used uh, over many acres to $1,000 per acre for high diversity mixes in smaller plots of one to three acres. Site preparation can range from $60 per acre when planting into previous soybean fields to 250 per acre when converting aggressive weeds into native vegetation. Uh, seeding and follow-up mowing needed to promote the growth of native vegetation can range from $70 per acre to $250 per acre. Uh, so using these numbers, seed along with project site preparation, seeding and mowing 
for establishment can range from $380 to $1,500 per acre. So I just, we don't have to resolve this now, but um, we seem to have uh, conflicting opinions from two different very credible state agencies. And um, so uh, it's just something to be aware of as we move forward. And I don't know if you had any comment uh, on that. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, we would be happy to coordinate with the person at Bowser with whom you spoke to um, get a better sense for those, those costs, those numbers, and any thoughts on contractors. Um, I know certainly with our construction projects where we use native seeds for plantings, um, those native seed mixtures are more expensive just than just our standard seed mixture. But when we do those with construction projects, um, we can you know get a better better cost on that than when we're out there just uh, putting in plantings. So another consideration there, and, and this program would certainly help to be able to keep up those areas of native plantings where we've done those with projects too. Great, thank you. I appreciate your looking into that. I know that um, there's all sorts of variables that go into. Uh, you know, getting these cost figures, and, and maybe they were, you and the Bowser were using different calculations, and so, um, I, you know, I'd appreciate the working through that with them, but uh, needless to say, this is a good program. Uh, I, I appreciate Representative Hansen, who brought this to my attention. I appreciate uh, uh, Senator Jasinski's uh, amendment, and uh, which allows us to move forward, and as I stated earlier, uh, there are so many ways that transportation and the environment and climate intersect, and this is one of them. So I'm really pleased that, uh, you know, Iowa does this, so we should be doing it too. So with that, uh, <laughs> Senator Jasinski, I don't know if I just lost some votes with that, but uh, Senator Jasinski, uh, uh, thank you for the amendment. You moved the amendment, I think? Yes, yes Mr. Chair, I would ask to move the A69 amendment. Okay, and thank you, Commissioner. Uh, all those in favor, or discussion? Discussion from the committee? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the motion prevails. And now uh, we will adopt the provision as amended. Uh, Senator Jasinski, did you want to move that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd move the, uh, I'd move item three. Uh, item three, uh, part D, uh, R9 on the side by side, the highways for habitat program. Uh, as amended, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the motion prevails. Thank you again. Uh, our next uh, item is uh, item number four, and that can be found in part D, R30 on the side by side. Uh, this is a house only provision. It's a forest products special permit. Um, the house author is Representative Liz Lagarde. And um, believe that we, uh, so this is, um, uh, has to do with the length of the trucks, um, and uh, the, uh, there is a technical amendment uh, that we need to adopt that came to our attention since this passed off of the House floor, the A106 amendment, and again, I believe this is just the technical in nature. Uh, um, Members, if, if there's any questions, I think MnDOT could answer those. Um, it's just uh, related to the, um, the load, uh, in, uh, ex excess load of 108 inches. Um, is there any questions or discussion to this amendment? Mr. Chair, I'll move the A106. Oh, okay. Uh, the A106 is before us. Um, is there any discussion? Oh, sorry. That's okay. We'll have Representative Cagle move the entire. We had Representative Senator Dibble. Right. Any discussion to the. Sorry, uh, not with the program. <laughs> <laughs> any discussion to the A106 uh, amendment? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the motion prevails. And I think Representative Cagle was uh, lined up to uh, move the, the broader provision. Representative Cagle? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will move um, item four on our spreadsheet to be included in the conference committee report. Uh, yeah. As amended. Yes. So uh, item four, uh, side by side, part D, page R30, Force Products Special Permit, as amended, is before us. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion prevails. Uh, and now we have a similar uh, uh, special permit. This is for farm products. 
uh, and Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, it came from Senator Johnson, and I don't know why it wasn't in the Senate language. I guess I have to talk to my chair over that one, but uh, I think it's a, a good uh, portion of the bill, and I would uh, ask to move item number five if there's no questions. Chair Neville. Mr. Chair, it's a, uh, to defend the honor of the Senate, it did get through committee. It's sitting on the floor um, on, on the second reading um, as a standalone policy item. Um, so we did we did view it favorably. So it's kind of a Senate, you know, it's a Senate position, just not in the package. I stand corrected. I think Mr. Greenfield had something, though. Uh, Mr. Greenfield. Thank you, Chair. Senator Jasinski, uh, the language from the Senate uh, first engrossment is in the House language. So just thought to clarify that for the committee. Thank you. I'm glad we got that clarified. Um, Okay, to the, uh, any discussion to the uh, Jasinski motion? Okay, uh, the motion is before us. Um, this is, again, definition of uh, farm product, special permit. That, again, it relates to grass seed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion prevails. Uh, our next item is uh, we have the actual the author of the underlying bill with us, uh, <laughs> Vice Chair Tabke, and uh, this this is a, a, another House uh, provision. We did a lot of Senate provisions yesterday. Now we're doing a lot of House provisions today. Uh, and uh, this is uh, item number six, uh, side by side, uh, Part D, R fifty four, interstate transportation of heating fuel. Uh, Vice Chair Tabke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I worked with. Uh Representative Olson, Olson B on this one, and uh, so I move item six, House language, Article Four, Section Thirty Six, to be adopted into the conference committee report. Any discussion to the tab key motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The motion prevails. Um, now we have uh, item number seven. Uh, and this relates to uh, minimum crew size, uh, otherwise known as the two-person crew bill. Uh, and um, this is Representative Brand's provision. He worked very hard on that. Representative Brand, would you like to move this? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move the A68 amendment. So this is the A68 amendment to uh, provision number seven. That's... Uh, Side-by-side side D um, and page R54. Um, so uh, we have the A68 amendment, uh, and that has been moved. Uh, Representative Petersburg. Discussion. Representative Petersburg. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, this is one area that I'm, I'm not sure that I can support either the amendment or this particular section. And, and giving you the rationale for that is because uh, I think it's always a, a dangerous move, something that we should be cautious about in getting re in the middle of employer-employee um, uh, -employee relationships. Um, the state should be uh, more neutral in that re respect. And in this case, it's even more um, uh, concerning because um, court case after court case across the United States indicate that the federal government is the one that will hold an exemption uh, to any kind of uh, control over minimum crew sizes and so forth. And so it's, it's important for us to understand that, um, that I believe they will be making a ruling here within the next year on what that crew size is going to be, which will pre preempt this, uh, uh, preempt this for preemption. Uh, I know I've talked with you, Mr. Chair, and I was going to offer a, a verbal amendment uh, saying that this would become null and void if that preemption takes place. Um, you said that you are probably not willing to accept it, so I'm not going to offer it. But I wanted, on the record at least, to say that I think this is a, a dangerous a direction to go. Um, we understand the concerns about safety, uh, and I understand the, the need for us to, to protect that. Uh, but uh, I think there's also... Uh, the railroads themselves understand the need for protection and safety as well and will do everything they can for that. And if it's going to be determined at the federal level, I think this is a, a situation where we're probably a little premature in actually uh, usurping that, that particular direction and one that I uh, pro will, not, will not be supporting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comments, Representative Petersburg. 
Uh, is there any discussion, additional discussion? Uh, Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I know it's a Senate position, but I would have to agree with Representative Petersburg. I voice the same concerns to uh, Senator Dibble on this issue. Um, I think it, it does raise some concerns, again, because the federal side has not made this decision. I think it will set Minnesota up for a lawsuit or a possible lawsuit. So I would uh, agree that it will be a difficult one for me to vote as well. So thank you. Thank you for your comments, Senator Jasinski. Uh, Represent Brand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to mention that uh, I had an opportunity to talk with the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen. They had their uh, state conference a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they gave me five minutes to talk about this particular provision in the bill that I've carried this year. And this is not a new bill. This is something that we've been working on as a state legislature for as long as I've been here, since 2019, probably before that. But, um, you know, the question I asked the audience was, raise your hand if you've been involved in a train accident, and there was not one person that didn't raise their hand. My second question was, raise your hand if you've been in multiple accidents. There was uh, more than half of the room raised their hand again. And so this is a situation in which uh, one person in a train crew situation, one person in the locomotive, if they get involved in an accident and they're not able to go get help, what's, what's the course of action look like? If they've got two people and one person is injured more than the other and the other person can go get help, because they're not carrying cell phones on them, they have no way to, to get out um, a message most times when they're involved in an accident like this. Somebody's got to stay behind on that locomotive to make sure that the locomotive and that train is secure for the interest of public safety as well. Now these trains, they started out pretty small in, in length. Now they're over three miles long. They're moving an awful lot of freight. They're moving mixed freight across the state of Minnesota and across the country. And the, the type of, of materials that they're hauling is increasingly more hazardous. And so I think we should be doing this for the state of Minnesota. I think we should be looking out for the communities across our state. This is a way to do that. Thank you for your comments, um, Representative Brand, and for your work on this bill. Uh, is there any further discussion to the A68 amendment? I think we're talking also about the underlying bill as well, but um, uh, further discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of the A68 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. The motion prevails. So now we're on the uh, underlying provision. Um, is there discussion to the underlying provision related to minimum crew size for railroads? Mr. Chair. I move Representative the, Brand. I move number seven on that line, line okay. number seven. Okay. Representative Brand moves... Uh, Item seven, uh, and that is found on page R, as amended, R54 on the side-by-side. -side. So any further discussion on minimum crew size? Uh, I'll just uh, echo the comments that um, uh, Representative Brand made. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to work on this bill for many years as well, and I know that uh, people I represent are very concerned about rail safety. Uh, we have a very busy corridor uh, uh, that goes through our area, several in fact, in District 61A, uh, the VNSF main line, we have Twin City and Western coming through along the Kenilworth corridor, and uh, I think this will be uh, appreciated again by the people I represent and, and many people I think around the state that live in proximity to uh, these rail corridors. So I want to again thank you, Representative Brand, and uh, appreciate your work on this. Okay, seeing no further discussion, uh, we have item number seven, uh, as amended, minimum crew size before us. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the motion prevails. Okay. <laughs> so noted. I'm sorry? I just said you're really fast with that gas. What's that? Okay. Um, our next item is item number eight, R58. And um, uh, on this one, I think Mr. Burris wanted to uh, speak to a little in a little bit more detail to the amendment or both, the bill and the amendment. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, this is taking us back to item number three. It was uh, brought to staff attention that there, oh, sorry. there might be some, um, uh, some clarification necessary. So I might recommend 
uh, revisiting item number three, which is the Highways for Habitat program. Okay. Uh, we can list out the, the elements from both the House and Senate language so that um, the conference committee is aware of, of which pieces from each. Uh, it's identified in the, in the working document, but just so that the, the, uh, a motion on adoption would identify the, the portions from the House and Senate language that would be uh, moved to be adopted into the conference committee report. Uh, so this is uh, going back to item number three. R9. The language is on R9 of the side-by-side, -side, uh, part D of the side-by-side. -side. And the uh, working agreement or, or motion would be to take the house language subdivision one as well as subdivisions four and five. And then take the Senate language subdivision two, and the effective date would it, it would essentially or would be the House effective date, which is uh, July 1, 2023. And then also to incorporate in the A69 amendment that had been adopted. Okay. So I th thank you, um, Mr. Burris. Um, so I will. Uh, just want to go over the so we would just move what you had just mentioned um, and I'll go over that um, house subdivision one and items subdivision four and five Senate subdivision two the effective date uh, July 1st 2023 and then the motion would also incorporate the um, a69 Jasinski amendment is that correct mr. Burris? Uh, mr. chair yes that's my understanding okay so mr. chair would we need to reconsider the Jasinski motion on this matter or reconsider the whole yeah all right so Senator Jasinski you want to move reconsideration of your motion on item three thank you mr. chair so moved right. sorry I'm oh. taking over the chair duty <laughs> that's okay <laughs> um, to uh, so the Jasinski motion is uh, first for the amendment, correct? Well, first we need to vote on reconsideration. Oh, vote on reconsideration. So all in favor of reconsideration signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the motion prevails. Aye. Then the amendment. Is, uh, well, the, the motion is described by Mr. Burris. Oh. The motion is described by Mr. Burris. Which so moved. Court, which includes yes, the amendment. To include the amendment. So moved. Yeah. Discussion. Uh, Representative Petersburg. Thank you. Uh, if I understood right, it seemed like uh, under the working proposal, uh, what Mas Mr. Burr said is exactly what's listed there. What is different from what is listed there on the right-hand column? Mr. Burr. Uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Petersburg, a prior document that had been distributed had some difference in the working proposal when this was first taken um, for consideration by the conference committee on another date. Uh, so uh, we felt that it would be best to just explicitly oh, lay out uh, what the elements are on the uh, vote by the conference committee today. Thanks. And thank you for the question, Representative Petersburg. That was what I was thinking of, too. Okay. So to the uh, underlying uh, motion, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, all those in favor signify as amended, all those, in fa uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion prevails. Okay, now we are on the uh, item eight, uh, side by side part D, R58. Um, and there is an uh, A124 amendment that I will move. This, um, Provision members relates to uh, reporting for metropolitan counties that uh, are um, receiving a uh, metro sales tax uh, for transportation purposes. And uh, this is a Representative Engel a motion in the House. It's the House only provision. Impose. Impose. Did I say collect? I don't remember. Involve. Okay, receive. <laughs> Sorry about that that impose a uh, sales tax. Um, and uh, we just are simply changing the um, 
uh, reporting to an even numbered year uh, starting February 15th. So that is the amendment. Is there a discussion to the A124? I will move that amendment. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the motion prevails. So now we're on the underlying motion. Um, is there a discussion to line eight? Okay, uh, seeing none, I will move uh, line eight as amended, and that is uh, side by side page R58. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the motion prevails. Okay, uh, next we have uh, line nine, and that's side by side part D, page R64. Uh, and um, this relates to um, civil penalties uh, as they relate to the pipeline safety provision. There's a, I'll have a, Senator Dibble moved this. The, do you want to explain it, or do you want me to take a shot at it? Okay. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a legislation that was brought to us by uh, the Office of Pipeline Safety. Uh, ended up being a bit, uh, you know, controversial. Um, and uh, but this is a, a part of the uh, legislation that I think all parties are. Uh, okay with. Uh, it's, it's not the controversial part of the bill. Um, and my understanding, again, from Office of Pipeline Safety, Department of Public Safety, is this is very important for um, some federal conformity issues. So uh, they wanted this um, to make sure this uh, passed in this session. So we are, we are doing that. And Chair Dibble, would you want, is there, move the uh, provision? Mr. Chair, I will move. Uh Item number nine, which is in the section D of the side-by-side, -side, found on page R64, the House language. Discussion. Okay. All those in favor of the Dibble motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion prevails. Uh, item number 10, side-by-side uh, -side part D, R69. Uh, this is... Um, a provision that we do, um, I think, biennially, uh, uh, sometimes in the tax committee, sometimes in the transportation committee. This year it is going to be in the transportation committee. It simply authorizes the Met Council to issue up to $104.5 million in regional transit capital bonds. That's for rolling stock, et cetera. And um, there is an amendment, the A73, uh, which uh, I believe uh, Senator Jasinski uh, has the A73? That is correct, Mr. Chair. I would like to offer the A73. Okay. Uh, proceed. Uh, A73 would limit it so it would not go to light rail, I believe, to my understanding. Uh, I think it's already in there. We're just basically putting some belt and suspenders on this just to make sure that we're confirmed that it's not used for light rail. Chair Dimmel. Uh, Mr. Chair, I support the A73. Um, so these uh, regional transit bonds that are supported by a levy on the property tax in the transit taxing district, a subset of the metro area, um, is only used for things like uh, buying buses and um, installing and improving bus stop shelters, things like that. It's not used for this purpose. This uh, concern came up a few years ago, and, um, and so everyone has agreed that this is fine um, because it's comfort language and so the Met Council has accepted this modification. We actually have this provision moving, well it'll be dropped from, but it is at, it, at present in the public um, finance article of the tax bill in the, on the Senate side and it does include this language so that it would be consistent with the Senate language as is currently adopted in the tax committee. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair Double. And it, yes, it is also my understanding that, again, this is existing law. There's a, a small uh, modification, the effective date, uh, and that the Met Council is uh, okay with this uh, provision. So is there a discussion to the A73 amendment? 
Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion prevails. Um, and then to the main uh, article, um, I think uh, Senator Morrison has that one, or not. <laughs> uh, article 10 as amended, yeah. It's the motion. Oh, Representative Petersburg. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd just like a comment on on the this piece after we get it moved, or do, would you like me to move it? I, I don't mind moving it either. Okay. Um, sure, Representative Petersburg, if you want to move it, that's fine. No, feel free. I, I just <laughs> want to have a little discussion. Yeah. I, I'll move number ten then. And if is it possible for us to have? I think Mr. Shetnan is here from the uh, Met Council for me to just ask a couple of questions. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Or would you prefer? Yes. That to no. Um, this is. Uh, very helpful to have uh, questions from members and the uh, appropriate state agency or uh, state entity. <laughs> thank you. And so if I could um, just ask two questions. The first one is kind of a two-parter, and that is that uh, we do this on a, a fairly regular basis. Every biennium we give dollar amount, and I know that it in increases inflationary purposes for each one. But I'm, I'm curious as to, you know, what is the revenue source for paying off that debt service and what is the current uh, debt that, that the um, uh, Met Council holds in, in aggregate? And then I'll have a follow-up question, Mr. Chair. Mr. Shetnan, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Great. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Judd Shetnan. I'm the Government Affairs Director for the Metropolitan Council. And uh, those are great questions. Representative Petersburg, we did have a call earlier today with Representative Petersburg and Mr. Marble uh, to answer these specific questions. And, and uh, so the council uses the regional property tax, as Senator Dibble mentioned uh, just briefly, uh, that we levy a property tax within the transit taxing district in order to pay for the, um, uh, for the, for the basically pay for the bonds that we, that we issue. And, in, this, in the uh, section, you'll see that we've received this authority going back to the late 80s. Sure. And so this is on a continual cycle that we receive these, uh, these funds, and we are in the process of always retiring debt at the same time we're issuing new debt. So that number kind of fluctuates from time to time. And so I don't have the specific answer that you're looking for right now, but that request is with our finance division as we speak based on the conversation we had this morning. So I will have that for you. Uh, here, um, I can email the committee or whatever people would like, but uh, we we are on top of it. It's okay. just I don't have it for you at this specific. Point. Representative Petersburg, and, and if I could just have one follow-up question, because we are increasing the uh, the debt commitment or the availability for those funds, it would seem to me that that would require um, increasing levels of debt service. And I'm inquiring if, if it's coming from property taxes, how is that impacting the property tax? Is that going up because of it, or is it staying fairly moderate? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair Shepard. and uh, members, Representative Petersburg, um, the way that the council um, moves forward with our property tax levy is that we don't issue a specific uh, levy for this. It's managed as part of our broader levies for our for our regional administration work, for our livable communities grants. Uh, all of those are supported in one larger property tax um, uh, levy that we put out on an annual basis. I do know that the, the, as the tax base grows when we levy these bonds, it is, we're trying to spread that out in a way where there isn't significant impact but uh, related to these bonds. But I also uh, need to point out that we do levy this as part of a broader uh, property tax levy for multiple purposes. But um, um, I can certainly provide you a, um, uh, an assessment of what all of this looks like. I just don't have it with me right now. But members, I'm happy to provide that. This is, this is very important for us. It's also uh, what we use as the 20% local match for federal dollars that are used to replace our fleet. So this really has a great uh, return on that investment, and that's why we've received this authority from the, from the legislature for so long, and I appreciate the committee uh, putting it in the, in the transportation bill. We are, um, it's a great place to, to have it as, uh, as we are able to um, uh, make sure that it gets included while we are at the table. Yeah, uh, Chair Dibble. Oh, Representative Petersburg, did you have a follow-up? No, I was just going to say uh, thank you for that. I understand that, um, you know, every time you add into the mix, it does impact the bottom line. So I, I was curious as to how you're managing that, and we'll be looking forward for more information. Thank you. Thanks, Representative Petersburg. Uh, Chair Dibble. Thanks. Um, 
just to expand a little bit, Mr. Chair, on what Mr. Shetnan had to say, um, the thing to remember, of course, is that um, this support for the, the bonding program uh, for this purpose um, has been going on for, you know, the better part of a couple of decades. Um, this is kind of the last remaining vestige of support for transit off the property tax that dates back to the pre-2001 session, my first session, when we took transit off the property tax for the most part, but for this very small piece that supports uh, a tiny part of the capital effort um, that's needed. The fleet, of course, needs to be renewed. A bus needs to be renewed every few years. Bus stops need to be installed and or improved. Uh, the thing to remember is um, debt is being defeased on a regular cycle as new debt is being brought on. So it nets out to be roughly the same. And just for a uh, sense of proportion or order of magnitude, the last I looked, um, this was a de minimis amount, less than 1% of what folks pay in their property tax. I think the average household in the metro area uh, would pay about $25, something in that, in that vicinity. So I've actually been a little critical of the Met Council for not upping that amount, uh, uh, kind of artificially tamping it down. So, uh, you know, I think they could go to slightly more effort and do better by bus stops and, and buses and the like. Um, but that's another conversation for another time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and Mr. Chair, if I Chair could Dibble, mention uh, thank one, you. Mr. one last Shetman. comment is that we do, uh, the council, just to be on the record, we do support the um, Senator Jasinski amendment as well, and we have no intention of using this to, um, to build a light rail line, and um, so we're happy to support it. But thank you. Senator Jasinski, you're doing very well with amendments Thank today. you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Shetton, well, before you go, you know, I said, oh, no, I'm just, <laughs> I have one question. Uh, I agree with this, this portion of it, but a question. So I think there's a cost to this, and I think it's 50000 the first year and 1.4 in the tails. Does this come out of the tax target or is this coming out of our transportation uh, target? And I don't know if uh, Chair Dibble. Boyd or I, I, again, That's I think an excellent a question, Senator Jasinski. Chair Dibble. Well, I have an excellent researcher, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So this, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, great question. Um, yeah, actually, I was going to mention, and thank you for reminding me, this is the first, uh, I think, the first time in this committee we were spending actual money um, from our targets. This comes from our targets, about $2 million bucks um, that we have to pick up. The, the cost is related to the interaction that this has with um, property tax refunds. So, uh, and so, it's, so we, we have to pay for... Um, the general fund implication, you know, so it's, it's very, it's a very small amount when you think about, you know, it's several million households, um, you know, in, in that small amount, but the calculation, with the way the calculation goes is that for those folks who continue to itemize rather than take the standard deduction and they deduct um, their, uh, their property tax, you know, and they, and they qualify for their property tax refund, it will create this interaction and so we're responsible for picking up about two million bucks out of our $1 billion target, which sounds like a lot of money, but it goes pretty fast. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Oh. Mr. Uh, again, just so Ms. Boyd, can, that's confirmed, right? $2 million is what it's coming out of our target uh, in, this, in the transportation. Is that correct? Ms. Boyd. Uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Jasinski, that's correct. It would be in the first biennium a total um, of 70000 and in the second biennium and ongoing it would be about $1.97 million. And again, out of our target. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Boyd. Thank you, Senator Jasinski. Senator Morrison, did you have a question? I, someone indicated you had a question. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Or a comment? Okay. Uh, all right, uh, any further discussion on the Petersburg motion that is uh, related to um, item 10, R69 on the side-by-side? -side. So as amended, we'll vote on uh, item 10 as amended. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, the motion prevails. Uh, now members, we're on um, one final item, item number 11. Uh, and this relates, the, you can find this in side-by-side -side part D, uh, page R69. And this is a, um, 
related to our transit safety package um, on the uh, Transportation Rider Code of Conduct. So this is a part of a broader initiative that um, uh, Vice Chair Tabke and Chair Dibble have worked very hard on this year, and um, I'm glad that uh, we are taking this on uh, today. Um, it is uh, a long time coming. Um, transit safety has really been an issue front and center uh, for many years, uh, I think particularly this year, and so it, it couldn't be more timely. Uh, and I'm very, very pleased. Again, we've had this provision, uh, I think it's passed the House, uh, both in uh, 2019, uh, Vice Chair Tabke, 2021, I think we had it again in 2022, so um, maybe even 2020. So uh, <laughs> four, after four attempts, I think we're finally going to get this um, across the finish line this year. So. Uh, Vice Chair Tapke, would you like to move uh, this item and uh, maybe just give us uh, a little uh, background? I know there's an uh, A126 amendment as well. Yes, Mr. Chair. Would you like to do the A126 let's, first? Let's or? do the amendment and then we can talk more about the uh, underlying provision. All right, so I move the A126 amendment, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And uh, this relates to the A126 is moved and this relates to uh, the stakeholder engagement process for the... Um, uh, and public comments as they relate to the uh, uh, ri uh, the, the trip program, the, the rider improvement program for transit in the metro area. Is there a discussion? Vice Chair Tabke. Yes, Mr. Chair, so thank you. I first just want to say uh, thanks to Senator Dibble for all the work on this. What this does is uh, takes the code of conduct that we've had written in, co in uh, statute throughout the project project so far and uh, makes it so that Met Council uh, needs to adopt a code of conduct, which has always also been there, but we're removing it from legislation so that it is able to be a more of a working document to be able to be updated uh, and also added a stakeholder engagement process on this. And so that's, uh, that is uh, what the amended language does. Thank you. So is there any discussion to the A126 amendment? Uh, Mr. Burris, maybe uh, if you want to go through the... No, he doesn't. Okay. Okay. After the amendment. Uh, Senator Jasinski. Uh, Mr. Chair, and again, I wasn't on some of those discussions earlier between the two of you, but the Rider Code of Conduct, I mean, has a little bit of a concern. I, I, I think we should have it there and then be, be able to be changed or maybe one line item, but putting these things in here seem fairly straightforward to people that would help people uh, feel better about riding that. I know I've talked to people in my district riding, and some of the concerns that are in here as the Rider Code of Conduct are some of the things that concern them when they go on there, some of that activity. So I'm wondering if, if we can keep some of that and then just say as, re, you know, some kind of language that can allow that to be revised by the council or something like that. But some of the things that are listed in the Senate side, I think, are some things that are huge concerns of people riding that already. So. I just leave it up to the to the committee to, to talk about that and see if we can at least keep that in there and maybe change them over time or revise them. But I, I think some of those things in there are, are some big concerns that I hear about. Vice Chair Tabke, did you want to? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Jasinski. Um, yes, yeah, so there are... Uh, other issues are listed as to what's misdemeanors and uh, petty misdemeanors, so there's a whole section of things that have that make it very clear as to what is and is not acceptable. It's just that the code of conduct will be a working document, that there is a, that there is a code of conduct that reinforces what things are uh, within the misdemeanor and petty misdemeanor side of, uh, of things, but this makes it so it is clearer who's responsible for it and making sure that, that, it, is, uh, that it is updated and making sure that it is taken care of. Uh, Chair Dibble, or Senator Zanzigani. Okay, Chair Dibble. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry to put uh, Mr. Shetnan on the spot again, if I could do that, <laughs> just to get some uh, testimony on the record. Um, uh, Welcome back, Mr. Shetnan. <laughs> so... Mr. Shetnan, you don't have you don't have the benefit of the side by side in front of you, um, but I think you're familiar with um, the Rider Code of Conduct elements, um, some of which uh, previously had been the subject of, I think, uh, uh, in law, um, petty misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. 
uh, classification of criminal activity. And you know, so there was some discussion about you know making sure that the kinds of behaviors and activities. I mean, some some of them increase the the nature of the the of the violation. Some we decreased, and then some we're kind of moving into this writer code of conduct. The Senate approach, of course, as Rep. Senator Jasinski. Um, just expressed was to um, enumerate the elements that we wanted to be included in the Rider Code of Conduct. The, the House said, well, um, let's include those elements, but let's have a, a community collaboration. The question I want to ask you, and I'll just, read, I'll just read what those are, and then the question I'm going to ask you is, would it be the intention of the Council, of course, working in conjunction with uh, a community process to include these elements in a writer code of conduct. And those, of course, would include, you know, being, you know, disturbing the peace with music and noise, et cetera, um, consuming food and beverages except when authorized uh, by the operator or other authorized transit official, um, caring or being in, in control of an animal without the operator's consent. That, of course, doesn't have to do with companion animals. Um, uh, and also, you know, there's this discussion about sleeping, you know, when is sleeping a violation or not. Um, uh, you know, there's certain instances where, <coughs> where sleeping is problematic, but many where, like when I get sleepy on the way home uh, for a commute, it's, you know, not, not an issue. So um, uh, um, would it be the intention of the Met Council, of course, working in conjunction with the community collaboration as described by the amendment? Um, to, to consider and include those elements in a rider code of conduct. Mr. Shetman. Uh, well, Mr. Chair and Senator Dibble and, and members, I think um, I can say that yes, that would be the case. And uh, I actually uh, think that having this, the stakeholder engagement uh, amendment added makes a ton of sense. That makes sure that we are hearing from uh, our riding community to make sure that we're finding the sweet spot as to uh, what needs to be included uh, what needs to be addressed and being able to have those conversations because as we had this conversation over the course of uh, many years on this, uh, we've talked about administrative citations and how we, how we deal with that, but there is this code of conduct uh, issue that's before us and having the ability to do the stakeholder engagement allows us to make sure that we're not missing anything either. And, uh, and so we would absolutely support it and based on the list of items that you laid out, Senator Dibble, I think those would all be uh, something that we would have the discussions about as part of our rider code of conduct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Chair Dibble. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Shetnan. Senator Jasinski, do, before Mr. Shetnan leaves, Senator yes. Jasinski. I like to keep him in the hot yeah. seat every once in a while. He knows that. He, he, he handles, there, it, pretty, he handles it pretty well, though, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. So, again, one of the concerns, and, I, and I've had some people ride, and, you know, their, their first impression of riding that was not very good, and I think I've told you a story about that of one of my uh, residents that rode that or uh, people from my community and, and didn't have a very good experience on that. And we all want it to succeed. It, it's only going to help Minnesota if it's successful. But the one on the item is the code of conduct uh, prohibiting sleeping. And I know we've talked about different types of sleeping, sleeping on the way home from work while you're commuting versus sleeping on there as a basis of the only place to sleep. So uh, how is that going right now uh, after COVID? And just kind of discuss a little bit what, the, what you think the policies will be uh, going forward in the, what you will now do your own versus what we are doing and how you address the issues that we're seeing and hearing about. Uh, well, Mr. Shetnan. Mr. Chair, Senator Jasinski and members, um, I think that's exactly why the stakeholder um, engagement piece is important because um, uh, there are all different types of activities that are occurring on our system. Uh, we want a safe system. We've talked about that numerous times here this session. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're striking the right balance. And, uh, and I, I can't speak to exactly what happened with your constituents, but uh, we have different types of activities on the, uh, on the trains and, and buses, and that is exactly what this bill, and I think Senator Tabke, or Representative Tabke, is, uh, is, is looking to achieve. And uh, I can assure you that the council will have a robust conversation about these different, these different items. Um, I wish we were only talking about sleeping, but we're not. And it, there's, there's bigger issues than that. And so uh, this will be one of the things that we talk about, without a doubt, as part of the Rider Code of Conduct. But uh, we have a lot of work in front of us. I am going to say here, to change the subject just a little bit, is that we have been working on the underlying administrative citations uh, bill for 
uh, going back to 2018, 2019, uh, we want to lean in on safety. We don't know if that's going to be the magic cure, but we do know that it is going to improve our safety, security, having additional presence on, the, on our transit system. And so I really appreciate the conference committee moving forward with this. This is so important. And, uh, and I personally am very thankful for it because we have been trying to do this for so long. And to piv pivot back to uh, where you're at, Senator Jasinski, part of all of this will be part of the assessment that we're going to do when it looks like when we look at how we are going to make these uh, different approaches, and it will have to be done at the council level with broad engagement, including legislative engagement, if you're so interested. I think, um, I think you know, we hear what uh, the legislature is interested in us uh, looking at, and uh, I can assure you that uh, I will relay that message to the, to the folks that, uh, that are at the council and are going to be looking at that. But I just want to say thank you very much, and, uh, and sure. we'll make sure that what your concerns are, Senator Jasinski, are addressed. Well, thank you, Mr. Just the last comment again. I, I, would, I think it's smarter to leave this language in and be able to add to it, but I understand what we're talking about, so I'll, allow, or I'll go along with that and, and pass the amendment. But again, I, I just think it's nice to at least have that as a minimum, and we can expand on that. But uh, seeing it's probably not going to pass on my side, I'll, I'll, I'll vote with you guys. But again, that, that's my concern is at least having these minimums, because these are the ones that really come to the top of the mind, and then l allow them to be changed over time. And I agree with Senator Tapke, we want to be able to change them over time, because different things may come up as, as we go on. But I think these are some of our big concerns that we hear about as legislators, so I think it would be nice to keep that in there but if we have your uh, word that we'll continue to work with these, I'll, I'll feel comfortable. Thank you, Senator Dzinski. Um, Vice Chair Tapke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to uh, just make sure that we're from our caucus, uh, the House Democrat caucus side of things. We have been, as we've been going through this bill the whole time, it's been really, really important to us um, that we continually reiterate the fact that uh, Transit has been, is a we've been have, experiencing issues on transit because transit is a magnet for uh, folks who are experiencing homelessness, folks who are uh, experiencing addiction, different uh, issues like that that are uh, congregating, magnified on our transit system, particularly right now on our light rail system. And um, it's really important that we uh, recognize that being homeless is not a crime, and that uh, we aren't criminalizing uh, and enforcing those kinds of things as we go forward um, with this. And so I just wanted to make sure that we're, uh, to be clear on the intent with this code of conduct is it, uh, it's not to, uh, as, as we have a code of conduct come forward uh, that gets passed by my council, that it's not to criminalize homelessness, addiction, those kinds of things. It's we need to be, uh, those are greater symptoms of what's happening in society. We need to make sure through other committees and other things that are going on that those are getting, uh, that we are working uh, toward a better uh, situation for all those things and that that's not specific to transit and we need to make sure we're not criminalizing that. So I just wanted to make sure we had that on the record as we're talking through this. Thanks, Vice Chair Tapke. Um, any further discussion on item 11 as amended? I'm sorry, we haven't amended it yet, sorry. Uh, any uh, further discussion on the 8126 amendment? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion prevails. Now, members, any discussion about item 11 as amended? And so the um, item is um, House subdivisions uh, one through three uh, and effective date, uh, Senate subdivision four. And then um, we just, uh, adopted the H2887A126 amendment. Representative Petersburg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and to this particular item, I, I would like to just comment on a few things, and that is that I, I believe it is absolutely essential that if the taxpayers are going to provide this service and they're going to provide uh, the assets, uh, the investment into this program, that we have to make it in a situation in which people are actually willing to ride it. Uh, because if they're not willing to ride it, it really doesn't do any good for us to provide uh, provide the service. And I've talked with uh, Representative Tapke quite a, quite a few times in, in trying to figure out what we can do best. And and we heard from uh, Mr. Shetton and from the Met Council that they've been working on some of these projects, some of these items since 2018, 2019, and still not really having a, a great impact on it. Uh, my only concern is that whether or not 
um, this actually will resolve the issue and actually get us to the point where it actually Im improves it. Uh, obviously, we need to do something, and so I, I don't begrudge uh, this particular piece of it. My only concern is that um, uh, it's not going to be enough to have an impact uh, quick enough for us to actually recover riderships uh, in which we would, would like it to. But uh, we will see how it works into the future, and hopefully we will have some good outcomes from this. But I think it behooves all of us to keep this in the forefront if we want to make uh, the transit system uh, rider free, uh, rider uh, uh, in which the rider actually wants to ride it. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Representative Petersburg. Um, is there any additional discussion to the motion? I'm sorry? Oh, uh, Mr. Burris, I think you wanted to uh, uh, add some uh, perspective here. Well, well I'm, I'm not sure if it's perspective, Mr. Chair, but uh, so that members of the committee are aware of the, of the motion, just to, to restate that, uh, it would be uh, taking on uh, item number 11, uh, House uh, Section 49, this is House Section 49, se Section 15, would be taking the house language subdivisions one, two, and three, and the effective date on the house side. It's actually identical between house and senate. And then taking senate subdivision four and the H twenty eight eighty seven A one twenty six amendment. Okay, I think we're clear on that. Any further discussion then on line items side by side D. Uh, page R69, Transit Safety and Enforcement. We've adopted the uh, A126 amendment. We have uh, clarity on the motion, uh, the tab key uh, and Petersburg motions. Or, uh, Petersburg did the amendments, tab key motion. Um, discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion prevails. So, uh, with that, members, um, we are our business for today is concluded. However, there's one more item: uh, our business in terms of the uh, uh, adopting provisions. Um, but Chair Dibble, you wanted to uh, give us a preview of an, another item that we'll yes, likely uh, be taking so, up. So, uh, Mr. Chair, um, I think I mistakenly communicated to our auditor, uh, Judy Randall, that we would be taking a look at the piece that would appropriate some dollars to the legislative auditor and what that might look like. Given that she spent all this time with us, maybe we can pre-hear the matter for and, and get the auditor's perspective on, on some of the ideas um, that I put in front of her um, to see what the auditor thinks, and then we'll be in a position to take that up at our next meeting. Yeah, and that is on the agenda for Friday. I'll be making an announcement about our next meeting, which won't be tomorrow. It'll be Friday in the time. But um, So, yeah, um, Ms. Randall, if you could come forward. Um, we'll have a little conversation, and then you don't necessarily have to come back on Friday. So, um, welcome to the committee, and please state your name for the record, and I think Chair Dibble has a question for you. So, excuse uh -huh. me, um, I think Mr. Greenfield wanted to say something. Okay. Mr. Chair and members, I just want to identify that the section we're referring to is on R1 of Part D. Great. So, so, so this um, is an informational hearing on <laughs> uh, R1 Part D. So, um, just to kind of kind of uh, cue it up a little bit here. Um, I think the conversation, uh, so this is a Senate-only provision. Um, the Senate has co had come in with language that simply um, allows um, the source of these funds um, to be uh, uh, appropriated to the legislative auditor to um, do with as the auditor sees fit. The House countered with um, we would that they would prefer that um, that those funds be used in a in a focused way. One was to um, audit data, IT functions, etc. Also, um, the, the origin of these funds is uh, from those who uh, subscribe to bulk data uh, from our uh, driver vehicle services. And there's concern that 
uh, in others, in maybe the House, you know, if I don't get this right, someone from the House can restate it because I'm talking about House concerns. Um, but the concern is that there are, it has been shown in other states where they have subscribers to, to bulk data, driver, um, you know, motorist data, that they're able to uh, figure out identities of people and their status vis-a-vis -vis, um, lawful presence, you know, in, in the aftermath of uh, driver's license for all. Um, there are those who could kind of figure out who those folks are and then, you know, use it to a ill effect. Um, and so it's hoped that uh, we could craft some language that would allow the legislative auditor to use these funds to audit IT practices throughout the state as well as keep an eye on this issue and make sure that subscribers aren't using their bulk data for bad purposes. And um, I had put some language in front of Auditor Randall and she had some response and reaction to that. So that's why she's here. Thank you, Chair Dibble. And uh, Auditor Randall, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record. And uh, if you want to give us some uh, thoughts about uh, the ideas that uh, Chair Dibble just uh, presented. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. For the record, my name is Judy Randall, Legislative Auditor. I'm happy to be here today, and I do want to appreciate you all taking up this provision. Um, just a little bit of history, which may be helpful, is that the, the data security account, which is where these funds go, um, was established in 2014. Um, but at that time, the then governor uh, vetoed the line that appropriated that money to OLA. So the money has been accruing since 2014 in this data security account, but without anybody's ability to access it. Um, so that funding grew to um, around $1.5 million, um, again, with nobody being able to access it. In 21, the legislature um, approved a transfer of $1.3 million of those funds from that account to the general fund, and that'll happen in July. Uh, but meanwhile, the funds accrue about $200,000 a year into that account. And so um, one of the most important things this new language does is simply appropriate that money so that somebody can use it namely OLA, but at least somebody can use it. That's really the most important thing rather than having it just sit there. Um, and as Chair Dibble said, um, I think that the, the new language that's coming forward from discussions with the House I think is really good. Um, it will allow OLA to use the funds to oversee um, data security, to conduct audits related to data security, the transfer of data information, IT system security. There's over 2,500 um, state systems um, across state government, and right now OLA has four IT auditors, and so these funds will allow us to hire two additional IT auditors, which will help us provide, you know, it's still now it's what, six people for 2,500 systems, but it's an improvement, and that will help us provide some oversight in general, but then the new language will help us also keep a special eye out on the use of the, um, the, use of the data that folks um, acquire through the bulk data purchases. So I, I think the new language is a, good, is a good place to land, and I appreciate everybody's work on it. Thanks. Thank you, Auditor Rendell. So, um, so coming soon to a conference committee near you, the language that we're talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, um, Oops, sorry. Thank you very much, Auditor Randall. Uh, and members, um, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for your participation today. And um, I just wanted to give uh, a little announcement about our next meeting. Um, and uh, we will not be meeting tomorrow. So uh, our next meeting will be Friday, May 12th, and the um, uh, House will continue to have the gavel. We get a, a couple days off here. Uh, and um, the Senate does. And um, uh, we don't have a definitive time, but it'll be in the later afternoon, sometime at 2.30 or later on Friday. So you can... Uh, start your weekend off with us, and um, uh, with that, uh, uh, we are adjourned for... Oh, no. oh, Chair Dibble, did you have any final thoughts that you wanted to share? Well, uh, the one thing, a uh, late breaker, is that um, finance is going to be in here tomorrow morning. Um, so all these promises we made that you can just keep your stuff at the desk and not worry about it, uh, you, you can either take it with you or just kind of pack it up into a nice tidy stack and the uh, pages will put, a, put it on a, on a cart 
um, but everything is going to be taken off the table so that finance can be in here tomorrow morning. Um, and then I just, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're taking the day off tomorrow to work in earnest and, you know, try to get some big pieces uh, through the bill, some policy items, the money piece, of course. I see a lot of people are really interested in what is the money going to be and how we're going to cut it up. So uh, we're going to figure that out. Uh, and so, you know, all y'all, I, you know, I see every single one of you, I think, has uh, beaten a path to my door or uh, texted me or emailed me so you know where to find us to continue those conversations. We, of course, are going to talk IER and quarters of commerce, so we'll have some opportunity to do that tomorrow. Senator Jasinski? Uh, Friday. No, I mean, but tomorrow we'll work oh, on Oh, well, tomorrow, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and try to just figure all that out. So, so, yeah, we have some big, kind of big conversations to have and figure out uh, as we make our way to Friday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you, Chair Dibble. Okay, well, with that, we have no further business, uh, and we will see everyone here on Friday afternoon. We're adjourned.